Hello, friends. Welcome to Trivia Over Tea, the quiz show podcast where we drink tea and play trivia. I am your host, Matthew Cook, and I'm here virtually once again with our scorekeeper, Carter Zanke. Carter, how are you today? I'm great. It's the head of the Charles this weekend here in Cambridge, Mass, for all the rowers out there. So it's a great time to play Trivia Over Tea. Very exciting. Unfortunately, I don't have any rowing questions today. Um, next year. Um, today is going to be a bit of an interesting episode um, because only one of our two contestants showed up. And so Carter has so graciously agreed to be the other contestant um, uh, along with his scorekeeping duties. So this will be this will be interesting, particularly because I'm going to ask Carter some music questions. <laughs> so <laughs> there are no uh, one, I could just like call one of my friends here and see if they wanted to just have me off the show. It's it's OK. We're, we're already committed. We're already committed to this and it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, <laughs> so, but let's meet our one contestant who did show up today, um, and that is Oliver. Hey, what's up? Um, I'm Oliver. Uh, I am a, a, a first year master student in music composition at the Shepherd School of Music at Rice University. Um, and I am joining y'all um, from Houston, Texas, um, which I will admit, um, you know. I love all of the people here, specifically Matthew Brown and his family. You know, they're the, the best people ever to hang out with. Um, hi, Matthew, if you're listening to this, um, I love you very deeply. Also, uh, thank you for the pen again. Actually, I met somebody, a famous person recently, and they signed something for me with your pen. All right, I'm sorry to all those listening who are listening to me go on this tangent. Look, this is, is that Matthew Brown's pen? Matthew Brown gave me this pen because oh. he went to Germany to the headquarters of Lamy, which is this really big deal um, fountain pen maker. And he went to the headquarters and got me this pen. It, it's amazing. I've literally gone through a cartridge of ink already and I've had it for like a month. Like it, it, it it's amazing. Um, it's like one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. Um, anyways, um, so <laughs> very long tangent, but yes, I love the people here in Houston. I think that they're actually really, really wonderful. The roads. Oh my God, it is like a roller coaster ride. And I, I, li I have almost died nearly every single day that I've been here <laughs> just from people driving crazy. The road, roads aren't marked. So there's like interstates and stuff. And there's just like all of the paint has died away and they don't care because it's like Republicans run everything so that they just like don't fix it ever. Um, but it, it, it's nuts. It's like truly nuts. Um, and then also the roads are all in disrepair and they're like, you know, they go up and down and wavy and all of this stuff. Anyways, that's just to say I'm coming to you from Houston um, and I am half enjoying it. No, I'm mostly enjoying it. Um, I'm well, good. Nice. I'm glad you're halfly mostly yeah. enjoying it. Rice, uh, is, by the way, Rice University, best place I've ever been in my life. It's just really, really fantastic. Um, it's, it's wonderful to be around so many really amazing musicians and people who are also just generally very nice to be around. Well, good. Uh, yeah, it's always good to catch up with you. Also, we have not spoken, I don't think, since May. So this is good. Yeah. At any rate, um, now yeah. that we've met our singular yeah, contestant awesome. today, um, we will start the show. Uh, as with all of our regular episodes, we'll have four rounds of questions today, each with a slightly different format. And so without further ado, Carter will explain the rules for round one. Round one is our first general knowledge round where we'll each get five multiple choice questions. Questions here are worth 10 points each. And to get one right, just guess the right answer and you get those 10 points. All righty, Carter, you're up first. <laughs> Great, glad I know the rules. Okay, Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm drinking some hibiscus tea today. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I've got I got my Earl Grey in my yeah, this Eureka is Springs mug. Very interesting, by the way. One of my fellow composers here gave it to me. Um, look at it. It's like it's so funky looking. Um, anyway, I just I, I didn't. I, it's been like sitting right next to my monitor because <laughs> I brought it in just for that purpose. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, here we go. Question one. Barat. Fear and Tirana are counties of what Balkan country? A, Albania, B, Greece, or C, North Macedonia? I go with A. That is correct, Albania. 10 points for me. There you go. Question two. Since 2009, the federal minimum wage has been set at what? A, $7.25, 
B, $10.50, or C, $12. What was the date again? Can you tell me? 2009, since 2009. Okay. I had to look this up recently, and I think it's A. That is correct. Okay. Uh, 29 states have minimum wages higher than the federal rate, but 21 states do not. Including Texas. <laughs> Including Texas. Yes, I, I learned that yesterday, though not surprised. Yeah. Question three. Which vowel results in the most space in the throat? So what's, which vowel results in the most open throat? A, A, sorry, A, A, B, O, or C, E? <laughs> Wait, this is very confusing. A is A. Yeah. And then, oh, and then ah. D-O is then body odor. And yeah. then... Um, yeah, so A-O-E. So are you saying A or A? A, sorry, that was my bad. A. I, I just read the letter, even though I clearly put it in brackets. <laughs> um, yeah. And then B is, sorry, what again? Um, B is O, and then o. C is E. E. I'm going to go with A. That feels more spacious than B. But um, th this is actually a bit of a trick question. The answer is C, E, oh. uh, because the tongue is the most forward uh, when you're saying the E oh. vowel creating uh, space in the throat. Ah is actually the most closed vowel by this measure since the tongue is farthest back. Wow. Uh, yeah. Even though it feels more open in the, in the, uh, in the mouth, the oral cavity, um, it has the least amount of space in the throat. The, the That's pharynx. Fascinating. Yeah. That's really interesting. Okay. Question four. <laughs> Evo Morales was the first indigenous president of what country? A, Peru, B, Bolivia, or C, Brazil? First indigenous president of... I'm going to go with Bolivia. That is correct. He was in office from 2006 to 2019. All right. And finally, question five. The ghost town of Jacksonville lies near the geographic center of what British territory infamous for being a tax haven? A, St. Helena, B, Turks and Caicos, or C, the Falklands? The Turks and Caicos just sounds like a tax haven to me, so I'm going to go with that one. That is correct. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well done, Carter. Oh, thank you. You got both of your Mason questions right, too. Oh, wow. Come at me, Mason. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, Oliver, are you ready? Yes, I'm just going to say that when Carter inevitably wins this, that I should still get to come back for next time since Sean didn't show up. But <laughs> still, yeah. Fair Let's enough. Let's just go ahead and see how this goes. Alrighty, here we go. Question one. Which of the following is not part of the human vocal tract? A, the trachea, B, the oral cavity, or C, the pharynx? Is it the pharynx? Um, no, the pharynx is actually part of the oral cavity. The two parts of the uh, or, sorry, part of the vocal tract. The two parts are the oral cavity, which is the mouth, and the pharynx, the throat. Ah, uh, okay. So the trachea, even though it is involved in making sounds. Well, the, the trachea. So the larynx. Um, oh. It sits on top of the trachea. Then what does the trachea do? Um, the trachea is the windpipe, connects the oh. air. So the air comes up through the trachea into the larynx, and then the vocal folds vibrate. They oscillate, creating a buzz, and then it goes up through the resonator, which is the vocal tract, aka the pharynx and the oral cavity. And then we hear sound. There you go. And once again, as I've been saying for the past several episodes, I'm currently taking a class called Vocology, in which I'm learning all of this stuff. And I'm writing these questions as a way to help me study for my upcoming exams. That's so there you go. And I can finally write science questions um, with some sort of base of knowledge. So it makes me very happy. Question two. The Pilbara, Kimberley, and Gascoigne are regions of what Australian state? A, Western Australia, B, South Australia, or C, New South Wales? Well, I don't know this at all, so I'm just going to guess New South Wales. Um, no, it's actually Western Australia. Ah. Uh. Yeah, the really big one in the West. Um, surprisingly, I did not write that question. That was an amazing question. Uh, yeah. Question three. Which novel by John Steinbeck follows main characters George Milton and Lenny Small? 
A, Grapes of Wrath, B, Of Mice and Men, or C, East of Eden? Of Mice and Men. That is correct. The characters are migrant, migrant workers who move around California in search of work during the Great Depression. Good book. Question four. Muhammad Reza Pahlavi was the last Shah of what Middle Eastern nation? A, Iraq, B, Kuwait, or C, Iran? Um, Lord. Um, my ex-girlfriend's going to get very, very angry at me if I get this wrong. Um, <laughs> Is your ex-girlfriend going to listen to this podcast? Probably not, but okay. um, I would also not be surprised if she did, in fact, do that. Um, sorry, I'm getting messages from Ariel every moment now. Okay, yeah, he's still asleep. Um, okay. as, as we suspected. Um, I'm going to... Yes, sorry. Um, I'm going to guess... Iraq. Um, it's actually Iran. It is uh, Iran, but that was the one thing that I was just thinking from deduction because it was Persia by the time that there was a last Shah. Um, you're right, but the, uh, he was he was overthrown in 1979. This was this was part of the Iranian oh. revolution. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and he died in exile. Yeah, and he died in exile in Egypt in 1980. Fascinating. Yeah. And finally, question five. How many British prime ministers have had a shorter tenure than Liz Truss? A, zero, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Um, on her 44th day in office last week, Truss announced that she would resign the premiership following weeks of turmoil surrounding her plan to cut taxes for the wealthy. So there you go. Yep. Well, that's the end of round one. So uh, Carter, can you please give us a score update? Well, we have Carter at 40 points and Oliver at 20 points. Fantastic. Well, now it's time for round two. So Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, in round two, we will each get uh, five open-ended questions. And questions here will be on the same topics, worth 20 points each. If we went wrong, our opponent can answer for 10 points. So for today's round two, um, in recognition of the fact that um, Carter is actually getting married next weekend, um, we're very excited about that. I pre-approved this with you, Carter, um, uh, in our last episode. Uh, we are going to have a round two about um, famous weddings slash um, celebrity couples. So, oh, no. um, and uh, Carter and Margaret are soon to join um, that elite group. So, <laughs> of married celebrities. Uh, yeah. So, Carter, um, are you ready for your five questions? Oh, I hope so. Otherwise, okay. I don't know if I'm for marriage. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You better, the, better study yeah. up before next week. Okay, here we go. Question one. On July 29th, 1981, King Charles III, who was then Prince of Wales, married whom at St. Paul's Cathedral in London? Um, Princess Diana. That's correct. Diana's really? Spencer. Yes. Um, it was estimated that 750 million people watched the wedding on television. Question two. In 1999, English soccer star David Beckham married Victoria Adams, who rose to fame as a member of what girl group? Victoria Adams? Yeah, Adams. Adams. What girl group? the cheetah girls or something <laughs> I don't know. uh no um uh oliver is it do you the know spice girls is the spice girls yeah um <laughs> <laughs> uh, victoria is posh spice uh the couple are still married and have four children together congratulations yeah question three in 2014 lawyer amal alamudin married what actor who at age 53 had been one of the world's most eligible bachelors. Oh no. Um, uh, sorry, who married him? Um, lawyer Amal Alamudin. Mm. This is somebody that many people consider very attractive, and he's in a lot of films. Interesting. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but I'm just going to say, you know, maybe it was Chris Pratt 
who's probably not very well liked in this way. Mm. Interesting guess. Um, <laughs> not correct. Uh, Oliver. Uh, Wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question again? Yeah. In 2014, lawyer Amal Alamuddin married what actor who, at age 53, had been one of the most world's most eligible bachelors? Age of 53. So now he's... Is it Leonardo DiCaprio? No, I don't think he's that old. <laughs> um, this is George Clooney. Oh. Um, wow. Clooney had been married once before to Talia Balsam from 1989 to 1993. Question four. In 2013, model Chrissy Teigen married what singer? Oh, no. Chrissy Teigen married a singer? Yeah. Hmm. Um, um, I don't even know who Chrissy Teigen is, so I really, okay. I don't know. Fair enough. Oliver, do you know? Um, I also don't know, but I'm going to guess. So w what singer? Yeah. Is Chrissy Teigen a um, man or a woman? Woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it Justin Bieber? No. Um, okay. No, very different. Um, Chrissy Teigen married John Legend. Uh, no, they're, um, they're the same person, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure. uh, the two have been married uh, ever since and have two children together. Um, question five. In 2018, Liam Hemsworth married what singer and former Disney Channel actress? This was really interesting. I did not know this. Um, not that I really follow celebrities, but I was I googled famous celebrity weddings and this popped up and I had no idea that they... Mm -hmm. Who married this person again? Um, so uh, Liam, Hemsworth, Liam Hemsworth um was the guy. He married what former Disney Channel actress? She was like a Disney Channel title character. Yeah. Very famous. Um I think uh, it was Disney Channel. I never watched the show. Gosh. Was it maybe the person who like played Hannah Montana, even though I know that it it might have very well been. Um, do you remember her name? Um who played Hannah Montana? <laughs> I don't, was it was it Miley Cyrus? No, it was Miley Cyrus. Oh, really? <laughs> Dang it! Uh, the couple divorced in 2020. Um, if if you didn't know that, I think Alyssa may not have come to your wedding. Uh, so, well, that, well, good good job, Carter. Uh, so uh, Oliver. <laughs> Uh, question one, 25 years before Charles and Diana's wedding, the other wedding of the century saw American actress Grace Kelly marry Prince Rainier III of what European principality? What's his name again? Um, Rainier. Rainier III. R-A-I-N-I-E-R. Um, Austria, not Austria. Carter, I I don't know. Okay, uh, he was a, a prince of Monaco. Uh, um, okay. the uh, <laughs> the 1956 wedding attracted widespread media attention due to Kelly's fame as an actress. Um, and like Princess Diana, she tragically died in 1982 from injuries sustained in a car crash. Wow. Question two. In 2000, Friends star Jennifer Aniston married what actor in a private ceremony in Malibu? Um, Jason Siegel. No. Uh, no. <laughs> Carter? Um, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Everyone knows about Jennifer Aniston and... Chris Pratt. <laughs> just, that's just thing. Um, no. Everyone's married Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, she married Brad Pitt. Oh. Um, yeah. And the, the couple 
went through a rather messy divorce uh, in uh, 2005. So yeah. Uh, question three. In October 2011, who filed for divorce from basketball player Chris Humphreys after just 72 days of marriage? Chris Humphreys. Uh, um, let's see. Man, I wish I knew who that was. Um, I'm going to take a wild guess. You've definitely heard of The Bride, though. Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. What? Yep. 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 It was Kim Kardashian. They they got married in 2011, and then they divorced 72 days, or, or she filed for divorce 72 days later. Um, um, after a lengthy legal battle, their divorce was finalized in 2013, and there were media outlets that reported that the marriage was just um, a publicity stunt. Um, so, yeah. But I remember this very specifically because, of course, I grew up watching a lot of sports, and it was all over ESPN, in addition to all of the news outlets. Um, yeah. At any rate. Question four. Following the overturn of California's ban, a ban on same-sex marriage in 2008, actress Portia de Rossi married what comedian, actress, and talk show host? Oh, oh um, Ellen DeGeneres? That's correct. Um, they had been together since 2004, and they are still married. That's the one celebrity type of person that I know is comedians or comedian tangential people as Ellen kind of became after she became a comedian and then host there you dialed yeah. back to me have you seen her stand up before have you seen her stand up before um actually pretty I, good okay good to know yeah I, I don't think that suggest I suggest checking it out okay I will and finally question five on June 2nd 1886 Francis Folsom married what U.S. president in the White House? Sorry, say the say the question one more time. On June second, eighteen eighty six, Francis Folsom married what U.S. president in the White House? William Howard Taft. <laughs> no, uh, Carter. Do you know? Eighteen eighty six. um abraham lincoln no uh very dead by then very dead by then um yeah no this is this is one of the uh classic like presidential um history trivia pieces uh grover cleveland was oh. the president that she named he's the only u.s president to be married in the white house cleveland was 49 at the time and Folsom was 21 uh, and cleveland had been the law partner of her late father so hmm. there you go. Well, that's the end of round two. So Carter, can you please give us a score update? Well, we have Carter at 80 points and Oliver at 70. Very good. All righty, now it is time for round three. So Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, in round three, it'll be a lot like round two, where we each get five open-ended questions. Questions here are worth 30 points each. Yes, 30 points each. And our opponent can answer for 15 points. They'll also be on a variety of topics and not a single one. All righty. Uh, Carter, are you ready for your five questions? Oh, I hope so. Okay. Uh, question one. What interstate highway connects the Denver area to Cheyenne, Wyoming? Um, that's going to be Interstate 70. Ooh. Um, well, you picked one of the two major ones, but uh, unfortunately, it was not that one. Um, Oliver, do you know? Um. Sorry, mom just talked to me. Something. Let me go ahead and exit out of this. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna guess uh, uh, Route 66, <laughs> no. which is not an interstate, is it? Uh, no, it's not. Okay. Uh, no, this is I-25. Uh, the two cities oh. are about 100 miles apart. Um, Carter, actually, you did guess an interstate highway that goes right through downtown Denver. Um, nice. Um, but it was the east-west interstate highway, not the north, not the north-south one. So. Is it east west is even numbers? Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, North South are odd. Basic fact that I don't remember. Yeah. It's very helpful. Um, although it does not apply in the three digit um, auxiliary interstate highways, um, those can be any direction. 
There's no rules there. No rules. All this place. Yes. But the one and two digits, very uniform. Alrighty. Question two. Francis Poulenc was heavily influenced in his development <laughs> as a composer by what other French composer of works like Trois Gymnopédies? Um, Jacques Adams. Mm, no. Um, Oliver, uh, who was it? Um, it's Eric Satie. That's correct. Uh, Satie's music also influenced composers like Maurice Ravel, John Adams, and John Cage. Yeah, kind of as we as we mentioned at the top of the show, um, Carter is stepping in in the last minute as, uh, as a contestant, and our um, would have been contestant was a music major who, who has a particular who has a particular obsession with Francis Poulenc. Like, uh, so. <laughs> obsessed with Poulenc. Yeah. So, um, apologies, Carter. That's <laughs> okay. Um, question three opened in eighteen twenty five. The Erie Canal once served as a primary shipping corridor across what state? The Erie Canal. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Lake Erie, which maybe runs through Michigan. Um, not Michigan. Um, well, it, it, Lake Erie does touch Michigan, but that's not All correct. Right. Um, Oliver? One second. Across which state? Man, why do I not know this? Um, is it Illinois? No, Illinois doesn't touch Lake Erie. Um, this is New York. Um, no. It runs from the uh, no, from the Hudson just, River. I was like thinking, okay, wait, where's where are they trying to get to? And I was like, oh, probably somewhere on the Mississippi too. <laughs> yeah, but the no, um good, good. um. There, there's a canal in um, Illinois called the Michigan and something canal. Um, it, it might be Michigan and Illinois canal, so something like that. Yeah. That connects uh, Chicago to the Mississippi River. Yeah. And okay. yeah, so, so that would graphically, I it almost made sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but this is on the other side. This is in New York, and it runs from the Hudson River near Albany to Lake Erie near Buffalo. Um, if you know the famous song, um, the Erie Canal, um, they they sing that. Uh, they, they sing from Albany to Buffalo. Anyway, it allowed goods and people to travel from the eastern U.S. to the Great Lakes region back before railroads. Yeah. Very common. Um, question four. Given that the frequency of the tuning A is 440 hertz, what would the frequency of the A, what would be the frequency of the A one octave lower? Oof. How many hertz are in an octave is a great question. That's, that's the, um, yeah, that's the, that's the question. <laughs> um, or what is the relationship in don't frequency? Push, don't give it away. <laughs> 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 um one octave lower from 440 hertz yep let's say let's say 330 hertz uh no uh oliver 220 that's correct mm. yes um when you go up how did I explain this? Uh, the frequency of pitches one octave higher are double, and okay. so it's not it's not actually a linear um, yeah. relationship. And so one octave higher than the A four forty would be eight hundred and eighty. Yeah, all all these are different relationships, and it's it, it's important to note for singers because of course it's our vocal cords that are vibrating that are creating these um, or vocal folds I should say that are creating these um, pitches. And so if you're singing um, a uh, a four forty. Your vo your vocal folds are oscillating at four hundred four hundred and forty times per second. Um, uh, whereas if you're singing the A below that, they're only oscillating two hundred twenty times per second, et cetera, et cetera. And there are twelve semitones in an octave. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Why is the twelfth root? So, Sounds like kind of. I learned something new today. 
Yeah, there you go. Now, yeah. now you can now you can go teach vocology in addition to computer science. Um, about me and going. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, question five. The 2021 single Visions of You is currently the latest release of what indie pop rock band who also released new versions of Animal, Everybody Talks, and Sleeping with a Friend alongside Versions of You. Visions of You. Visions of You. Is this Maroon 5? No, not Maroon 5. Um, Oliver? Is it... Um... What is it? It's like glass animals or something like that? Uh, no, Neon Trees. Oh, I'm so uh, Yeah. yeah. I wish that I knew anything other than classical music. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Um, yeah. I sang karaoke last weekend, um, actually, and I tried to do Dua Lipa levitating. Um, there were a lot more words than I thought there were, um, <laughs> and I didn't quite get them all in. But, you know, I tried. Anyway, Oliver, are you ready for your five questions? I suppose that I am, yes. Okay. Question one. What interstate highway extends for 880 miles across the state of Texas, passing through Houston, San Antonio, and El Paso along the way? Um, like a wild guess. Is it? Um, is it? I-10. It is I-10. It yep. is I-10? It I is I-10. That's my first ever interstate question that I got right. Oh, my God. You had to go to Houston <laughs> to get one right, apparently. Yeah. Um, I-10. Um, over a third of um, I-10's total length is in Texas. That's nuts. Yeah. Question two. Formerly a weatherman for the local NBC affiliate in Los Angeles, who has hosted the syndicated version of Wheel of Fortune alongside Vanna White since 1983? Ward. Um, I have absolutely no idea. So I'm just gonna, and it's definitely not Bob Barker. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm going to guess that it's it's Matthew Cook. Um, I would be good at hosting it, but um, alas, it's it's would. not me. Um, I nominate you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Although I'd I'd rather host Jeopardy. I would be better at hosting Jeopardy. You would be, be you would be actually a really really good Jeopardy host. Yeah. Um Ken Jennings if you're listening out there, um please hire me. Thank you. Um anyway, Carter, do you know who's the host of Wheel of Fortune? They were a weatherman, weather person? Yeah, he yeah, he was a weatherman um for the local NBC affiliate in Los Angeles and since 1983 he's been the host of Wheel of Fortune alongside Vanna White. Yeah, the only weather man I know is like Al Roker, so I don't think that. No, the... uh, no, not Al Roker. Um, this is Pat Sajak, um, and uh, together, the um, he and Vanna White have appeared in over seven thousand episodes. A wheel wow. of fortune. Um, question three: On a standard six-string guitar, the highest and lowest strings are usually tuned to what note? Six-string guitar. Man, I should really know this. <laughs> um, that being said, I do not know this, so I'm going to guess G. Um, it's not G. Carter, do you know? They're tuned to what note? Yep. Um, I'm going to guess C. Uh, no. Uh, e is what they're tuned uh, to. Yep. Yeah. Question four. A naturalized American citizen... Arnold Schwarzenegger was born in what country? Oh, I should know this. I like just heard about this. Wait, where was it? It was um, that's like the most German-sounding last name, really ever. Um, but I. Hmm. But I feel like that's too obvious of an answer. Um, actually, I'll just go with that. Yeah, is it Germany? It's not Germany. 
Carter. Belgium? No, Austria. Oh, oh. Yeah. that makes more sense. Um, uh, he came to the U.S. in 1968 at the age of 21 as a bodybuilder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and story is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally, question five. Which of Gustav Mahler's symphonies was the first to include a chorus? A chorus. Um, that would be the second symphony. That's correct. Um, his third and eighth symphonies also include a chorus. Yeah. Uh, so, well, that's the end of round uh, three. So, Carter, can you please give us a score update? We have Carter at 80 and Oliver at 160. All right, and now it is time for round four. So, Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, round four is our showdown, where we'll each get the same three questions. Questions here worth 40 points each, and we'll reveal our answers about the same time. Oh, uh, all righty. Um, so, Carter, Oliver, are you ready? One yes. Second. Get my Matthew Brown pen. Oh. oh, yeah. That'll give you good luck. It will, because he's good at this show. Okay. Here we go. Question one. What nurse popularized the term birth control and opened the first birth control clinic in the United States? Answers, guesses, Carter? I guessed Mary Wright. Okay. Um, Oliver? I guessed Sue. <laughs> Just that, Sue. That's my answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, both sadly incorrect. Um, uh, this was Margaret Sanger. Uh, um, yeah, and she was arrested for distributing information about contraception. Uh, this would have been in the, in the 19 teens. Um, and uh, she also established organizations that evolved into Planned Parenthood. Um, yeah. However, she is criticized for her support of eugenics as well. Yeah. I believe that there's a there's an old saying that you have to like what call a Sue and like call for Sue. And I was like, oh yeah, and then like that's the name to like get an abortion. So I oh. was figured that that was probably the person, but I guess not. I just so no. Sue. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard that. Margaret Sanger was this person. Question two, what was the first state to ratify the U.S. Constitution? Connecticut. Okay. Oliver? Delaware. It was Delaware. Yes. Yeah. Um, it ratified the Constitution on December 7th, 1787, and its state nickname is the first state. And there's nothing else about that state that anyone knows anything about. <laughs> Joe Biden was a senator from Delaware. And he went to school there. He went to University of Delaware. Yeah. yeah. So, Which is crazy because, you know, a, a non, you know, Ivy League or whatever president he's yeah. actually doing pretty good so there you go that's and and, popular, and but he's doing <laughs> still pretty good and we have run out of things to talk about with the state of delaware um i think um also the next question is also about delaware um yeah actually uh no um <laughs> i have been to dover i actually uh, my family and i toured the uh, state capitol in dover um gosh wow. that would have been six years ago now interesting so, Kind of an interesting little town because it's like out in the middle of nowhere on the Delmarva Peninsula. So yeah. anyway, anyway, Delaware. And finally, question three: William Goldman won two Academy Awards for writing the screenplays for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and All the President's Men, before writing the screenplay for what 1987 cult classic comedy? It's one you've heard of. Uh, William Goldman. 1987. 1987. All righty. 
support her. Is this airplane? Um, my guess is also airplane. Uh, no, sadly not airplane. What? Um, but uh, but good good guess. Um, this is the Princess Bride. Oh, yeah. Um, Goldman said, "quote I've gotten more responses on the Princess Bride than everything else I've done put together. All kinds of strange outpouring letters." Something that's, that's really Princess interesting. That, yeah, no, we really both had that exact same <laughs> guess. <laughs> well, at, at least you uh you uh you know me. So, yeah, yeah. and I I wouldn't put it past me to put airplane in there. But airplanes, that's a like one of the best movies ever. It's great. It is. Yeah, I watched it over the summer at Ozarks. My friends didn't think it was as funny as I thought it was, but it's that, and that made me very sad. Um, but that's okay because I know who my true friends are, and my true friends are the ones who like airplane. So that's true. It's yeah. me and Carter. Yeah, that's really Oliver good. and Carter, my my only two true friends in this world, um, which is why I've asked you both to be here today. Um, <laughs> at any rate, that's the end of the game. So, uh, Carter, can you please give us the final score? We have Carter at 80 and Oliver at 200. Well, Oliver, you have won once again. Do you have anything that you would like to say? Yeah, a big thank you to... Um, who should I thank? Um, I should probably thank Kurt Stallman, who's my current teacher here. That man is really wonderful. Um, and he taught me how um, to uh, calculate octaves, <laughs> um, among other things. But he, um, I feel like I would not be able to get up before noon if it were not for him. He's a very supportive and wonderful person. Um, so thank you so much, Kurt. Um, and thank you also to... Um, Matthew Cook specifically. And thank you to Sean for um, supporting me, even though you're not here right now. Um, next time. Next time. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to get Sean on uh, at some point. Uh, thanks, Carter. Yeah. Maybe thanks, if, Carter, maybe, for jumping in. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if it's at like 4 p.m., then he'll be up by then or something. Thank yeah. I think the last time we, we did um, an episode with the two of you, we did it in the afternoon, um, uh, as I recall. Um, but Alas, I have an audition this afternoon, so I yeah. uh, need to do it in the morning. Got your priorities yeah. straight. Yeah. Well, um, and for the record, I learned about um, octave relationships from the physics of music class at Pomona College, which I took my sophomore fall with Alma Zook in the uh, physics department. I think uh, I've learned about it now three separate times. Physics of music, electronic music with Tom Flaherty, and then electronic music here at Rice. Very good. Yeah. Well, that's our show for this week, folks. Uh, thank you for, and thank you, Oliver, for uh, being on the show today, as well as Carter Zanke for being our scorekeeper and our other contestant. Uh, and uh, thank you, Mason Cook, for composing the music. Today's questions were written by Mason Cook and yours truly. And thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to Trivia Over Tea on your preferred podcast platform and leave us a review if you enjoyed it. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages at Trivia Over Tea, as well as our Twitter account, also at Trivia Over Tea. And feel free to message us on any of these platforms if you have any comments or suggestions regarding the show. And tune in in two weeks' time when we'll have two, hopefully two, contestants uh, and uh, 33 more fantastic questions. So thank you. We will see you in two weeks.